Uh, today I'm really excited to talk to you about managing metadata with EPMA. I know EPMA is many, uh, new to many of you, so we can provide some information on it. And I'm going to start off with a brief introduction of Finit. We specialize in the Oracle Hyperion Enterprise Performance Management suite of products, and we break those out into four key areas. The first of which is what we refer to as financial close and consolidation. HFM is the main product in this grouping, uh, but we're seeing a lot of interest in financial close manager and account reconciliation module lately. In terms of integration, uh, we have an in-depth background for everything you see listed, um, but we're best known for our FDM work. We've been working with FDM since the upstream days and have done more FDM projects and more FDM customizations than any company in the world. The planning and business intelligence grouping uh, is our planning and S-base practice. Uh, we have extensive experience with the various modules inside Hyperion Planning. And we also have a long history with S-base dating back to S-base V5 in 1998. As a company, we do full cycle implementations, uh, starting with discovery and requirements gathering through the entire project cycle to deployment and go live. We offer infrastructure and have developed many key project accelerators, such as automating the historical data tie-out. These can uh, really reduce the total hours in your project. Providing support for our clients has always been a big part of who we are, and we're proud to make it an official offering now. Uh, Finit Answers is staffed by our Hyperion experts, and as a unique offer for our Hyperion Enterprise clients, any fees used on Hyperion Enterprise can be applied to a future project uh, you do with Finit to replace Hyperion Enterprise. As with many things we do at Finit, we are often a little unconventional, and Finit Answers is no, no different. Uh, we have a pay-as-you-go option where you only pay for the time you use. Uh, so if you sign up and don't use the service at all, uh, you won't pay anything. We also have several different types of offerings that allow us to customize the support specifically to your environment, applications, and needs. And if you want a little more information on that, uh, you can visit our website, or you can contact Greg Barrett directly at the email address listed below here. We strongly believe that service plus solutions equal maximum value. We're the only company in our industry that compensates its employees on client satisfaction, not how many hours they bill. Our employees have an incentive to make sure your project is successful, not to drive up chargeable hours. Uh, at Finit, we always use our own employees. Uh, we don't use subcontractors. Uh, your Finit consultants are Hyperion experts who really enjoy and are passionate about working with the Hyperion products. Uh, we also work closely with Oracle uh, Hyperion development on product strategy and development. Our customer service is something we're extremely proud of as a company because we continue to have a 100% customer satisfaction rate. A little bit about me. Uh, my name is Eric Rands. I'm on the HFM team with Finit Solutions. I've worked with Hyperion products for over seven years and in finance for 12. I'm based out of Wichita, Kansas. These are my two girls, Ella and Ava, at a uh, college football game last year. And our other presenter who is uh, helping me out with this presentation and will co-present this topic is Christine Ong Estrada. Uh, she's a former enterprise and HFM administrator. Uh, she's ha she has more than 10 years of Hyperion uh, experience and is based out of Austin, Texas. Uh, these are her uh, twin daughters here, London and Paris, pictured in Spain in their flamenco dresses. Uh, K-Scope, Kaleidoscope is coming up in June, so please join us there. If you register using the code FINIT, F-I-N-I-T, you can get $100 off your admission. So for today's agenda, uh, we're going to cover managing metadata with EPMA, uh, focusing mainly on HFM. Uh, we'll talk about what exactly EPMA is, uh, how to create applications using EPMA, uh, how to manage applications EPMA. Um, an important point to remember during today's presentation is that there are many ways to accomplish tasks in EPMA, so finding the one that works best for your specific situation is the key. So I'll turn it over to uh, Christine here to uh, lead us off into what is EPMA. Okay, hi everyone. Um, so what is EPMA? Um, EPMA of course stands for Enterprise Performance Management Architect. And um, this is a feature of the Oracle Foundation Services and this is integrated with the different Oracle Hyperion products such as HFM, planning, S-base, profitability and cost management, 
and uh, DRM, which is uh, Data Relationship Management. And so um, EPMA enables um, administrators to create, manage, and deploy Hyperion applications within just one interface. So in this snapshot, you can see um, to access EPMA, you go to once you log on to um, Workspace, go to Navigate, and then Administer. And you can see uh, the second group of modules here, uh, which, are the, which is the uh, EPMA section of Workspace. So uh, these modules are Dimension Library, the Application Library, Data Synchronization, Calculation Manager, Transform Classic to EPMA, Library Job Console, and then the uh, Configure Interface Data Source. So next, we're going to talk about the evolution of the different utilities, utilities that you could use to manage metadata. So from the uh, Hyperion Enterprise and then the Classic HFM, um, you were using the regular desktop client, and then with uh, HFM, you were using the metadata manager, and also uh, just to support the editing of um, uh, metadata records, you could also use the Excel macros and also the text files. Now, in the uh, latest version of EPMA, you have several or multiple utilities available for use, but then um, as long as you know or understand how each utility works, then you can determine which one would be best suit your needs at that time. For example, you know, when we're saying we're building the metadata file or a new application, we would advise that, uh, to use the uh, EPMA file generator. So it, it's based on how you want what your need is. So uh, let me uh, talk about the utilities. Um, the desktop client. Um, the desktop client is uh, still available in EPMA. But it, for the latest version, it's a, for view purpose only. Now the uh, Excel macros and text files, you could still use this, you know, Excel macros and text files um, with EPMA. And then the EPMA file generator is a utility that is installed in the server, but this can also be installed locally. And this allows you to extract full application metadata files from the EPMA or the shared library. And then the EPMA file generator Excel add-in is really useful during the initial metadata build. And Eric will be discussing this in more detail later. So the next one, the Dimension Library, is a web-based module in EPMA where you can import metadata text files in the form of ADS files. And also, you could edit the uh, metadata directly within the uh, Dimension tree. And you could also uh, modify the attributes within the Dimension Library. This module also comes with a utility, really useful utility, called the Grid Editor. And here, um, you could use the Grid Editor for adding, removing, or performing bulk changes to uh, the attributes of the members within the same dimension. And lastly, LCM, which is uh, the Life Cycle Management. This is a component of shared services. And you can use this to export or migrate artifacts. This can also be used as a metadata backup method. So that backup, the, the backup task can be automated via the uh, integration with workflows. Uh, Christine's kind of talked to us a little bit about um, the different components and modules. Uh, I want to start off and look at creating an application. Uh, and to do this, we'll look at Classic first. So in Classic, we define an application profile or that .per file uh, in the Metadata Manager or on the web. After that, we would create a new application based on that profile. Then the application is registered via shared services. And then finally, security can be set up. We've got just a few general questions here at the end. And the first question we want to talk about is, how do I convert my Classic application to EPMA? Uh, and can you go back? Uh, Christine talked a little bit about the uh, Transform Classic to EPM Architect utility. So that just takes a few minutes to run uh, and convert your Classic app to EPMA. Um, a lot of um, times beginners at, at EPMA like to develop the app in Classic and then convert it um, so you can kind of learn the tools a little uh, more slowly at your own pace. Um, the question is, can I go back? Uh, the answer is yes, you can. What you need to do is use the Copy App utility. Um, 
when you copy an EPMA application using that utility, you have the choice to put it in a classic format or retain the, the EPMA formatting. So you, you can go back. Uh, next question here is, can I rename a base member in EPMA? And, and the answer, as Christine mentioned, is yes. Uh, but we wanted to advise you that you do this with caution. Um, data is not lost when you rename a base member uh, through the dimension library. Um, it's very easy to do. You can just right click the base member and choose rename. Um, however, uh, any journals, rules, uh, FR reports, grids, forms, member lists, anything like that directly referring to the old member might be impacted and it might not uh, function properly any longer. Uh, in addition, your drill through uh, back to FDM uh, is lost. Uh, the next question we have is, is, should I set up my metadata as shared or local if I have one HFM application? And due to the dimension associations, it's a bit of work to move local dimensions to shared. Uh, so, for example, you can't just share entity and account. Uh, associated dimensions need to be moved as well. So when doing this, uh, attributes are sometimes lost, and you need to move things in a specific order, as Christine mentioned. Um, so we'd suggest if there's any possibility of sharing in the future, you just go ahead and, and set up your uh, dimensions as shared. Uh, the next question we had is, is, can any of the new EPMA functions be automated via task flows? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, EPMA has been incorporated into task flows. Um, data synchronizations, importing the metadata, and deploying applications are all included in version 11.122. Uh, what version of HFM is Oracle teaching in their classes? Uh, is it Classic or EPMA? Um, Oracle is currently only providing courses in EPMA. And we're finding that many of the instructors only know EPMA. Um, as far as the versions go, there are course offerings listed on Oracle's website for 11.1.1, 11.1.2, and 11.1.2.2, which is uh, quite a bit different from the, the previous two. Uh, if I convert from classic to EPMA, will there be any new security concerns? Uh, the answer is yes here as well. Uh, there are new roles for EPMA administrators, uh, as well as dimension readers, owners, and writers. Uh, these need to be considered when setting up security for admins who make uh, any metadata changes. And then, uh, next one is, there are several methods to manage metadata in EPMA. Uh, how do I know when to use each one? Uh, and this is a really tricky question, and it's really whatever works best for you. Uh, we talked about three main ways today. Um, as a suggestion, when building an application or restructuring an entire dimension with thousands of members, uh, the EPMA file generator, especially the Excel component of it, uh, would be a really good tool to use. If you're modifying, adding, or changing hundreds or thousands of members, um, LCM with that export for edit function would work great. Uh, if you're doing 20 to 100 changes and maybe it's just updating uh, a single attribute, on those accounts or entities. Uh, the grid editor in the dimension library would work very well. Uh, if you have just a handful of simple changes, uh, making them directly in the dimension library would uh, definitely be the quickest. So finally we get to uh, the all important question here is, is EPMA better than, than classic? And in my opinion, um, I, I tend to favor EPMA. However, if you have a, a smaller app and you have a whole bunch of different tools and utilities already built about, around Classic and you're very familiar with Classic or maybe you have just a brand new admin without time to learn EPMA. We haven't heard any indication Classic is, is going by the wayside or anything like that. So there's no imminent reason that you would need to change to EPMA uh, other than the new options you have for metadata management. Uh, again, along with that uh, come uh, new new headaches for you as well. So I'll let Christine chime in on that one a little bit as well. Yeah, my opinion about that is, you know, like even though you're using Classic, I would, um, you know, like I've uh, I've done EPMA and then one in one project I had to do Classic, and I uh, truly feel like I miss working on EPMA because I've already enjoyed the benefits of what EPMA had to offer, and so uh, you know it's like. You know, the learning curve may be a little high, you know, it depends on, you know, just keep on practicing, but once you learn it, you really will like the uh, features you make because uh, it makes the life of an administrator a lot easier. So when you encounter errors, there's a lot of uh, ways to fix that error. Thank you very much. We hope you guys got something out of this. 
Uh, you can also request copies of these slides at insights at finitesolutions.com. Thanks again, everyone, and have a fantastic weekend.